You know, when we were speaking offline earlier, it's actually you said something very interesting to me, which is that when you have a lot of laws, that actually kind of can create a more general lack of accountability in society, not around like necessarily specifically criminal behavior, but uh, uh, you know, all, all sorts of behavior. Yeah, so in California, we have a lot of laws. We, every year, just the state has, last year we had over 700 new laws. And uh, bear in mind that there's counties and there's cities. And in LA County, we had a law that if you hand out plastic fork and knife to your customers uh, without them asking, you can get punished. And you'll get a big fine uh, if you do it a couple of times. And what happens is that how are you going to control that as, as a restaurant owner? How are you going to make sure your employees won't hand out the plastic knife to somebody? A lot, we're having a lot of these kind of laws that um, is very easy to break. And what happens is that we could fall into the culture of not following the laws because it would be very hard for people to follow all these laws. One of the things, the contrast here in the U.S. versus the countries I've lived in is that people really respect the laws. People follow the laws. In relatively, 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 right, relatively. right, right, right. Um, they're they're law-abiding people. Um, and in third world countries or countries that have lived in, in, essentially the laws are there, but nobody follows them because you have friends in the government that they can, they can cover for you. And, and in some cases, when I lived in China, what happens is that there's government officials, that's their business to actually help you um, break through this mess that is in the legal system. So essentially you have to always have a relationship with them, there's a lot of bribery, and they have a lot of power. And unfortunately, from what I've gathered, California is headed that way, where we have a lot of laws and we're making more and more laws, and some of them are not possible to follow. You know, I, can, I can be a really good restaurant owner, but I'm hiring my my staff from schools and maybe one of them is in a bad mood and he hands out the plastic fork and knife. I told him not to do it, but he's doing that. Maybe he handed out to 10 people. Do I have to pay a big penalty for that? And um, so what am I going to do? I have to know the person that works in the government office, the, the bureau that's in control of this. If I have a really good relationship with them, then they won't enforce it on me. So this is, this is what can happen here. We live in an era of censorship and disinformation, and it can be really hard to know what's true and what's false in this information climate. To get honest information and insights you can trust, join us on Epoch TV. You can sign up for your 14-day free trial at ept.ms slash freetrialjan. That's ept.ms slash freetrialjan. And that's fascinating because basically what you're saying is like, you know, over creating too many laws, creating this morass of laws actually creates a situation where corruption becomes more rampant because of that. There's just being too much stuff to deal with. That's fascinating. You know, tell me a little bit about your background, actually. You know, you. Uh... So I grew up in Iran uh, until I was 16. Then I lived in Mexico City. Then I came here. Then I went to China and helped a family member build a company. So I worked in China. I understood how it works, the system. Uh, I had to deal with the government a lot. And then I built it. I came back. I tried to build a hedge fund and timed it really well in 2008. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. And then I built a technology company. And, uh, and then from there, I decided to join the Epoch Times. And I've seen the American culture here, the way the American system works. I've seen it inside companies, you know, we, we, we admit to failures. We're not afraid of failures. We talk about them. We say we, we're sorry and we can recover from it. In China, that doesn't happen. Nobody says they made a mistake. You won't see that. Unfortunately, in California government, we are seeing the same culture that I saw in China, where nobody admits to a failure. We had a big fraud the uh, Employment Development Department, EDD, of California, we had give $20 billion uh, of checks to people uh, for unemployment during the pandemic. We even gave it, gave it to prisoners, people that were in prison for life. And 
$20 billion. Nobody came out and said, I'm sorry, I, we made a mistake. We should have ran this department better. Nobody said that. And um, this is something we're losing in the state. There's also other values that, that we have here. One of them is um, diversity of opinion and thought. You know, this is, uh, I've seen, this is something unique to the U.S. where I've seen, like, you go to a football game and you can see different fans of different teams. They're, they're talking, they're having a good time, and they're watching the game together. Uh, you're in a company, the executives allow other differing opinions to come to the table and discuss and come up with solutions. And in California, we are running this state with only one way of thinking. And it's pretty extreme. Even um, the Democrats, which majority of the state is, is, is uh, Democrats, but within the Democratic Party, there is one voice. And they're not even accepting other ideas within their own party. I mean, the Democrats here are afraid of questioning or publicly talking anything that could be negative about that ideology. They are not, they're afraid of talking about. Also, another um, factor that I've seen that, uh, here in the corporate world, what I've noticed is that we are very action-oriented. We look at problems, we solve them, we make things happen. Uh, unfortunately, in California government, we are not doing that. We have, had, we have so many different problems, like homelessness and like fire, water shortage, drought and water shortage, and power shortage. And we are not really dealing with them. We are just having programs after programs after programs, and nobody is taking action. We are not taking any serious action. Um, it is very similar to how the Chinese Communist Party was doing things in China. And uh, one of the, one, I have this story when I was in China. I was in, got invited to an American Chamber of Commerce event, and the mayor of Beijing was there. And somebody, somebody asked a question. And they dared to ask this question, like, why, how, what are you guys doing about the air pollution in China, in Beijing? Uh, the mayor deferred the question to his weatherman. Uh, the weather, uh, the person who was in charge of the air quality got up and said, Beijing has 260 clear days and we're working very hard and getting it better. And my, on my table, everybody smiled because we all live there. We know there's not even 60 clear days in Beijing. Um, but nothing happened. And this is what's happening in the California government too. When leaders of the state, when leaders are talking about issues like homelessness and they want to allocate $15 billion to, or $5 billion to build housing for the homeless, when they get up there and say this program has worked really well, nobody's asking a question. So we had this program in the state where we were supposed to build, in, in LA, we were supposed to build studios at $120,000 a studio unit for homeless. And we, the, the city allocated $1.2 million. People paid the tax to make this happen. Each unit has, is costing the city between $600,000 to $800,000. And when the government officials from the city of LA stand up behind the podium and say, this is a great program, it's working well, the newspapers will report that. They're not going to give you the data of how it went, where it is, how many houses they've built how many homeless is off the street because of this program. So the media is not telling the people, and, and the people trust the media.